Welcome back, fellow collectors, and thank you for tuning in to Diecast Emporium. If this is your first time, let me extend a special welcome to you. So today we're going to take a look at probably one of the most highly anticipated models releases from Die from uh, Diecast Masters this year. This is item number 85554. It is the Caterpillar D6XE LGP track type tractor with a VPAT blade. VPAT is an acronym for Variable Pitch Angle and Tilt Blade. As it is part of their Highline series, it does come in the collectible tin, so it is presented beautifully. So before we take a look at the model, let's take a look at the packaging. Unusually, it has a picture of the real model, and uh, or, or the real machine, excuse me, and not a model. So that's quite unusual on the side of the machine, but it does provide you a really good look at the first cat model to have the new cat logo. And that presents our first question for this model review. Let me know what you guys think. What are your first impressions of the new Caterpillar Hex logo? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Is it going to grow on you? What do you think? Uh, for me, the verdict's still out. I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. It's definitely different. Uh, I will admit that it took me a little while in 2007 to warm up to when the logo changed then. But uh, eventually I did like it. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Anyway, top of the tin. Another uh, high-quality gloss picture of the real machine, which looks pretty good. On the side, again, Diecast Masters Highline Series 85554. And pause the video if you want to learn about the real machine, and yet another beautiful picture of it. All right, so let's get the tin off, take a look at what's inside. You have your catalog and your picture of how to get the operator in, which is pretty self-explanatory. I'll get to that in a minute. You have Bob, should you want to put Bob in the cab. And you have a little tiny pin. And I will show you where this goes in just a minute. And last but not least, you have a little pair of tweezers that's used to insert Bob into the cab if you want to do that. But you really don't need to use it, as it's pretty self-explanatory, and it's pretty easy to put Bob in the cab without using that. So allow me just a minute here to get the tin off and get the dozer out of the packaging. There we go. And inside, you do have to remove these little track protectors off the tracks, which is kind of nice because it does help protect the tracks from becoming separated. All right, so here is the model. I've been waiting for a Cat LGP dozer for a while. I think it looks awesome. First thing that you will notice immediately upon looking at the rear of this machine is, yay, we have a Cat dozer with no ripper. And here's where the pin comes in. So this is a little tiny tow hitch. They give you a pin that you can just drop into the back here if you want to. It goes in just like that. And it will go in if you want to. You can put the pin in all the way down if you want to. Um, it has a little ladder here that folds down for access. It is plastic, so you have to be careful, but the color match is good, so it looks decent. Your cat logo here, done up really nicely. Told you about the, uh, about the cab. It lifts up just like this, pops off, and inside you can see the operator's station. You have cat on the back of the seat, a couple joysticks. Pretty nicely detailed in there. Here you have your Cat D6 XE, which looks good. A couple tie down point there. Coming over to your blade, which looks really good. It's got a nice wear plates and bolts on it on the bottom, which look great. On the side, very similar to the other side. And we already showed you the back. Underneath, not a whole lot to write home about. But I know a lot of you like to see the underneath of these machines. So there you go. Now we will move on to the function. I already showed you a little bit about the ladder on the back and the tow hitch. This dozer, unfortunately has a bad case of uh, ED, happens to the best of us, I presume. As you can see, it won't stay up, which is extremely unfortunate. 
and uh, I will have to have a conversation with Diecast Masters and hopefully obtain a replacement. Because you don't really want to pay $86 and have uh, this happen to you. So, not great. Also not great is your cutting angle. Um, it goes down only about that far. And because the tracks aren't, aren't strong enough and the blade mechanism isn't strong enough, it doesn't hold the machine off the ground. Your angle... That's all you get. You're offset to the right side. Offset to the left side. You can get somewhat of an angle, but it's not the best. Show it to you straight on. Your angle to the left is slightly worse than your angle to the right, meaning you can get a little bit more to the right than you can to the left, at least on my dozer that I got. I would presume it's pretty identical to the rest of them. Your height, that's it. It's as far as it goes. Of course, again, mine has a severe medical condition, but again, I would presume that it's about the same on every one of them. So if these cylinders worked correctly, this is the extent of the height that it would go up. And your degree of motion on the other end is only there. So a bit disappointing there, I have to be honest. Now moving on to the dad bod tracks, they are quite fat, quite wide, but they look great. I love LGP tracks, always have, always will. They roll quite freely, quite well. They are individually linked. And here's another great thing, you may have already noticed that, but there is a fair range of oscillation in these tracks. They transverse very well, both sides. Both track frames, which look absolutely awesome. So if you were to build a diorama around this, and this is on some uneasy ground, which in the real world, of course, you would use an LGP dozer, uh, you can get some pretty interesting poses on some pretty rough ground and some shaky terrain. You could really use that for um, some awesome poses on dioramas. So just an idea there. So overall, the Cat D6 LGP Dozer by Diecast Masters is presented beautifully in its tin. Um, if you take apart the fact that mine has a little bit of a uh, severe medical condition with its uh, ED issue, um, I presume that that's only a, a manufacturer's de defect on my model. If it worked correctly, it would be a decent dozer. I am disappointed on the range of motion on the cutting angle and the limited tilt angles both to the left and to the right considering the biggest selling point of this dozer is supposed to be the variable pitch and angle and tilt um, I think a little bit of liberty and some engineering was cut in terms to rush this model to market to make it to Bama just my opinion could be totally wrong there um, however if this would have been delayed and fixed correctly this could have been an awesome model however if you were into LGP dozers or if you're buying this for it to simply sit on a low boy or for this to be um, stripped down so it would look correctly on an American low boy, that is the blade completely taken off, uh, it would look phenomenal and really cool. Or if you're way more talented than I am, which is not very hard to do, and you're able to fix the ED problem on this dozer, again, it would be a great model. So by measure of full disclosure, this model has its issues, could mostly just be mine, However, when you get yours, please feel free to let me know if your angles are as restricted as mine. And uh, maybe we can get Diecast Masters to fix these before they are rushed to the rest of the world markets. And uh, we can turn this into an awesome machine. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you have any comments or concerns. As always, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, thank you for tuning in. Be safe, take care. We'll see you in the next video.